So what is the deal with dairy? Okay. When you're on a low carb diet or ketogenic diet or even when you're fasting, a lot of times people tend to bring a lot more dairy into their diet because it seems to be a little bit more satiating for them. But what I want to discuss in this video, and I've brought Dr. Stephen Cabral here with me, is how dairy actually affects your body when it comes down to intolerances. Okay. We always hear about lactose intolerance or we hear about maybe inflammation associated with dairy. We don't realize that there's multiple different avenues in which dairy can be wreaking havoc on your body. And I'm not here to say that dairy is totally bad or totally evil, but there are a multitude of different things that could be occurring in your body. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself real quick just so everyone knows who you are. I'm Stephen Cabral. I'm a board certified naturopathic doctor and I specialize in Ayurvedic functional medicine and something called bioregulatory medicine. So just like we were talking about right there, when we're talking about, you know, is it the lactose or is it the protein or what's going on in dairy, we can actually clinically verify what's going on with people's bodies, but we can also give them some of their symptoms as well. Like you're experiencing this if this is going on in your body. So yeah, looking forward to chatting about that today. Gotcha. So, so what we're going to do with this video is I'm going to discuss a little bit more of sort of the, uh, the casein effect of, of dairy and kind of the protein effect and what's happening in your body. And then Dr. Cabral is going to totally blow your mind with all his science of the fructans and the different proteins and everything like that stuff that I couldn't bring you on my own. So first off, I'm just going to touch briefly on the lactose side of things. So if you have a lactose intolerance, it's a whole different ballgame than some of the stuff we're going to talk about. That one's pretty simple. You lack the enzyme or you have very minimal enzymes that really help break that down. Okay. You're not having an, uh, the ability to actually digestively break it down for one reason or another. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. That's why people that have a lactose intolerance can usually take a lactase enzyme and not have as much of an issue. Uh, but it does sort of warrant a further investigation that if we're already missing an enzyme or we're lacking in an enzyme to break something down, we might have more of a kind of bio-individual uh, necessi necessity to really have lactase coming in from other things, which tells us that we're not able to break down milk as an entirety, not just in the digestive system. Right. So it's like if our digestive system is telling us you shouldn't be having this, then what is happening at a cellular level? But what I want to discuss really quick is there's something interesting known as BCM7 in dairy. So BCM7 is a component of a particular casein protein. Uh, those of you watching, maybe you've heard of A2 casein protein, or maybe you've heard of A1 protein, or maybe you've just heard of casein protein, like a lot of supplement companies will sell pure casein protein. The, the interesting thing is, first of all, casein is a very toxic protein. It's not something we should be consuming a lot of. In fact, it's very, very, very inflammatory. So if you're consuming just straight up casein protein, I highly recommend that you probably just throw it away or don't use it, or at least do some more investigation in it. But what happened was way back when, hundreds of years ago, when we were actually first starting to utilize uh, cattle for dairy, there was a different structure of protein that was in them. And it was known as A2 protein. So it was this different kind of casein that came from the dairy that functioned pretty well in our body. We didn't have too much of an issue. But as evolution went on and as everything started to change and there was some genetic mutation and as these cows were being hybridized and bred differently, it started to change. And this protein went into what is now known as A1 casein protein. So that is what is the modern protein. That's what we're seeing all the time. And this protein is not easy to break down. This is the protein that triggers an opioid effect in the body. So dairy can actually be just as addictive gram for gram as heroin and some other street drugs pretty darn powerful, mm -hmm. and it all has to do with that. So I'm going to leave it there. I can touch on that a little bit more, but I want to turn to you to be able to discuss, you know, some of the other things you were mentioning, like fructans and everything like that before. Yeah, and it seems too from the research, and this is fairly recent, that A1 cows-based milk actually increases homocysteine in the body. So not only is it creating kind of like the puffy look maybe to your body, it's inflaming your arteries that you can't see. So if you combine that with high cholesterol and high CRP, that's really a recipe for cardiovascular disease. So really, really detrimental, um, definitely in adults and especially in adult males. But when we're talking about dairy, what we're talking about in the protein specifically, casein makes up about 80% of the protein. And just like you mentioned, casein, I remember back, back in my day of you know more bodybuilding, those types of things like, drink casein before bed, it's a slow time release. Well, yeah. one of the reasons it's a slow time release is that it's so hard to break down by your body. Like it turns into a gel. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a good yeah. thing for the body at all. And so like, it's great that you're bringing that up because a lot of people don't want to say that because casein is also extremely cheap to make. So unlike whey is 20% of the protein in dairy, 
casein is about 80%. So there's so much more gram for gram casein in a pro in cow's milk protein than whey. So if we're looking at it, you, if you can, you know, you can make the argument for whey protein and increasing immunoglobulins and all these different things, but casein is not going to do that for you. Casein is protein, so I can't, I can't say that it's not, but what happens is uh, it's inflammatory and it does cause what's called an IgE or IgG-based immune reaction. So not in everyone, but so the nice thing about I have a clinical practice, uh, we've completed over a quarter of a million client appointments. And in that, we do a lot of lab testing. So I run something called a food sensitivity test. You can do it right at home. Literally, you poke your finger and you put some blood drops on the card. We do it for children and we do it for adults. What we find is this, is that the majority of people are sensitive from an IgG perspective to cow's milk. Okay. And now, the, here's the interesting thing. Not goat's milk, not sheep, but cow. So we're looking at a larger protein molecule, a more inflammatory form of casein, just like you said, A1 versus A2, and that what the animals are fed matters as well. But the bottom line is this, whether you have you know, leaky gut where these proteins can come through, or your actual immune cells can go right into your intestines. So what is happening, to make this a little simpler, is that your immune cells are actually attacking these protein strands. When that happens, it creates inflammation. That inflammation, if it's an immediate reaction, so that's an IgE reaction, it can show up as a headache, brain fog, um, itchiness, hives, red ears, watery eyes, especially in children. You see watery eyes, red ears, kind of like the psoriasis yeah. on, their, on their face, eczema. I'll tell you right now, if you can eliminate one food, even if you just think, I'm like if you're just su you're suspecting that dairy might be an issue, eliminate it for three to four weeks. See if you do better on it. My first recommendation is to run that lab to check because what happens is a lot of people are eating dairy right now. They're feeling fine. But what happens is an IgG reaction is a 24 to 72 hour later reaction. That means it's a latent response. So a day or two after eating that, that cow's milk, they're actually getting the inflammation. And at that point, the body just kind of looks puffy all over, might feel a little bit more run down, a little bit more inflamed, some brain fog, a little less energy. And that's more of an IgG versus IgE. And then maybe in a moment, we can also talk about the sugars and how that affects the body as well. So, and then IgG also, if I'm not mistaken, has a cumulative effect too. So as you, because that's the one that really, so IgE essentially, if you look at it, I don't want to say half-life because that's not right, but if you look at IgE as terms of like it's affecting the body, it's rather acute, like it happens fast, which means it doesn't have a whole lot of time to generate a feedback loop and create more. Whereas IgG, like once you start creating inflammation, then you're creating all these other situations that are occurring in the body that are triggering more cytokines to do other things and trigger more inflammation. So that's the thing is with dairy, it can be very tricky. You know, you can have uh, a glass of milk, let's make it simple, have a glass of milk and you may not get diarrhea and you may think, I don't have an issue with dairy. There's no problem at all. So you continue to have another glass and another glass for a period of weeks. And then all of a sudden you just start feeling generally sick and unwell. Like mm -hmm. you just feel really lethargic and you feel really lame and you feel puffy, like you said, and you don't know why. And you're like, well, it can't be the dairy because I've been doing that for three, four weeks. I feel fine. Well, that's what's going on is you do have a cumulative effect. And I will be the first to say, so I started bringing back a little bit of, and it even happens with whey now and then you, because you yep. still have dairy components. I had recently brought back whey into my diet temporarily because it's like, eh, you know, I want to try to you know, maintain muscle mass a little bit more in a low calorie way. So I, this is a true story. Just started uh, doing this a few weeks ago and I was feeling great at the beginning again. I was like, oh, cool. Maybe I can do whey again. Maybe it's not causing an issue. You know, two weeks ago, start getting the effects again. I start feeling it. And if I wasn't able to recognize it because I had gone through it before, I probably wouldn't have wondered if it was the whey, but I knew sure. it was. And then guess what, you know, it took, me, it took me close to a week to eradicate those effects again. Uh, so I mean, what you're saying is just totally dead on and all has to do with just the immune response that cascades and can cumulatively builds up. Yeah, it'd be like, if you get punched in the arm, your arm can swell a little bit and that would be the IG reaction, but you leave your arm alone, it will rest, it will rebuild and it will go back down. But if every day you keep getting punched in the arm, that tissue only becomes more inflamed, it actually starts to die and you will not recover, you won't repair. So that's why, you know, you can't always look at the first introduction. The first introduction sometimes just primes the immune system. It's the second time you put it in that you might have that reaction. So the other interesting thing with dairy, and you're right, like it can be whey or it can be casein because they're still both proteins. So when we look at an immune-based reaction, we're actually looking at the proteins. We're looking at the either IgE or IgE, or there's actually an IgA-based response. And we always test for the IgG, because that's the hard one. Like, if you have a reaction two days later, really hard to know all the nine meals you might have had over the last two to three days. 
But in IgE, we always say like, well, you know, if you feel the brain fog, the joint pain, those types of things, well, that's an immediate base reaction. But here's the other thing, is that it's not always the protein. It's not actually an immune-based reaction. So if you have dairy, and we were talking about this in a previous video, and you have bacterial overgrowth like SIBO, or you have candida overgrowth, dairy actually, even though we think of dairy as kind of like a fat and maybe a protein, there's carbs in there as well. Especially if we're talking about it from cheese or milk or whatever it might be. What happens is dairy contains something called fructans as well as lactose. So lactose we know about, right? Lactose is that sugar that if you have an enzyme called lactase, well, it can help to break that down. Yeah. Great, but what happens is you don't get away with uh, removing all the fructans, which can start to ferment in your intestines, and that can cause the bloating and the gas. So that's why a lot of people, if they're taking lactate tablets or they're taking a lactase-based enzyme, they still have the bloating, they still have the gas. There's an issue with their microbiome, and that dairy is not doing them any favors. So dairy is honestly one of the most, uh, cow's milk dairy, I wanna qualify that, cow's milk dairy is honestly one of the most volatile foods that I've seen in my practice. And if there's only one food I can recommend removing, just as even a trial, it would be dairy without a doubt. Yeah. Well, and there's so many dairy alternatives these days, honestly, it, there's no real reason to have to constantly be consuming dairy. I mean, true story, it's, uh, again, with, with my wife and our, our baby, it's, uh, Amber had gotten uh, food poisoning shortly uh, after having the baby. So her milk supply didn't run out, but it was, it was limited. And we're like, well, no way, we're giving this kid formula. But we fortunately were able to find a goat's milk formula. Sure. And so now, not that he's exclusively on formula, but he has you know one or two bottles a day coming from goat milk formula. Sure. And it was for that exact reason, was the last thing we wanted to do was you know, pump him full of just this immune response when he's a newborn. I mean, right. just triggering his body to already start having this. So I mean, it's interesting to say that about goat milk because people always think goat milk still has lactose in it, but lactose isn't the issue, generally speaking. For sure. We can get around the lactose thing. That's, that's like your body's first initial warning sign. That's step one of 500 things that go wrong with dairy. But mm -hmm. uh, no, that makes perfect sense. And just circle it real quick back to the ketogenic diet, since I know a lot of my viewers are on the keto diet. Uh, we talked in another video about how the gut microbiome tends to shrink when you're on a ketogenic diet. Not good, bad, ugly, neither, none of them. It's just, it happens to shrink because there's less uh, fuel for certain bacteria to grow. So then what happens when people are on a ketogenic diet, especially for a longer period of time, is they start getting bored and they start consuming copious amounts of dairy. Mm -hmm. They have tons of cheese, tons of heavy cream, because it's easy and it's accessible and it just still tastes good and it gives them that kind of emotional response to food. Sure. But what's gonna happen is just like Dr. Cabral mentioned, is now you are putting yourself in a situation where you are throwing off the gut balance very, very easily. Because you have a smaller gut microbiome, you have the propensity to be able to throw it awry very easily because you're dealing with a smaller quantity as is. So the impact of those fructans could be exponentially more powerful on a ketogenic diet than if you're not on a ketogenic diet. So I say this because you need to be extra careful on a ketogenic diet to not go totally stir crazy and just start having uh, all of your fats come from cheese because it's gonna be a big, big problem later on. And you might take a long time to end up having your gut recover from that. Without a doubt. So I mean, and basically the bottom line is, dairy is a really poor food combiner. So you can't mix it with a lot of other foods or it doesn't sit well in your stomach, doesn't digest well. It has sugars that can ferment in your gut, which again, it is fine for some people as long as they have a balanced microbiome and it contains predominantly casein. Again, you can get whey or casein or typically they have both inside of full fat dairy or, or full protein based dairy. And, and that can be reactive to your immune system. So if you're dealing with uh, any type of joint pain, inflammatory issues, brain fog, skin rashes, anything like that, the simplest thing to do is, is do a food sensitivity test or simply eliminate it from your diet for about three to four weeks. It allows you to kind of empty that rain barrel, as I say, and you'll see for yourself, you'll actually be able to prove to yourself. So kind of like, forget about everything, does it work for you, yes or no? And then you'll be able to get that answer. Yep. Perfect, and ended off with, you said Rain Barrel, your new book, The Rain Barrel Effect, is available on Amazon. Terrific read, you guys gotta check it out if you're interested in your health at all. So, Dr. Cabral, thank you for coming on. My pleasure, thanks for having me. And as always, any ideas for future videos, you know where to put them. See you soon.